Um, you. I know. You're a fucking disappointment. For everyone wondering, Darling the Franks is a mecha anime that was made by a studio named Trigger. And apparently, when this anime came out back in 2018, it was a big thing, like literally the entire internet was talking about it, people were drooling over Zero Two from this anime, and since I had nothing else planned for today, let's review this anime and see what all the fuss is about. So the anime starts, and we get to see a dying planet at a known point in time. I want to take a bath. Not again. Right away we get introduced to the pilot of Evangelion, oh I mean, I mean Franks. I swear to god if one more person compares this show to fucking Evangelion, Right away after that we get introduced to the main character whose name is Hero. Yes, I'm not joking. The main character's name is literally Hero. Hero and his unknown friend are about to get sent somewhere. But instead of telling us something about the main character, we get this scene. Wish the seats in your personality could be this soft and yielding. Knock it off, doctor! Why? And apparently, all guards were looking in a different direction because Zero Two just casually runs away from them. Why she runs, you may ask? Because she wanted to swim. Oh no, she's drowning! I've gotta help her! Bruh, I love how Hero runs in like 3 frames per second, and then the Zero Two appears and she's in like 30 frames per second. Priorities! I thought ocean water was supposed to be salty. Uh, this isn't an ocean. Yeah, I'm aware of that. But this puddle's the closest thing I could find to an ocean around these parts, so here we are. Oh my god, what a brilliant dialogue! <laughs> we also get told that the pilots here are named Parasites. And after that, everyone's favorite waifu just says she's in love with the main character. Wait, what? You know, I think I've taken a liking to you. How would you feel about being my darling? But anyway, a bunch of hitmen appear and... What's your name? My name? What's your name? Suction Cup Man! My ass! What's your name? My code is 002. But everyone calls me 02 for short. Also, fun fact Aska's number in Evangelion was also 02. Look at all those grown ups! Yeah, they're all here to see us. Crazy, huh? And after this unnamed ceremony where I don't know who talks to the parasites, we get to see the. We get to see the scene that looks exactly like a scene from Evangelion, what the heck? And in this training capsule or whatever that was, it is revealed that Hero and this girl cannot pilot the Franks. And that fact, of course, leads to... So don't play the martyr! Who cares if it's favoritism? You're lucky you get the chance at all! But luckily, a bunch of screams get interrupted by the... By the... By the dragon! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know in Evangelion some angels also looked kind of cringy, but come on, look at this thing. How does it even walk? As a result, Hero wants to pilot his darling. Uh, I, I mean, he wants to pilot with his darling in the Franks. Get get it? That that was the name. That, that was the name. Oh, okay, whatever. Get a taste of you. After all, you are now my darling. <laughs> And because of their synchronization or whatever, the robot gets transformed into into a robot with a butt and breasts. Aha. Uh -huh. And because of their power of love, they slice a dragon, which explodes exactly like an angel from Evangelion. No, it's it's just a coincidence. Next we get an introduction of so-called second best girl, who is also a parasite and who tells Hero how dangerous it is to pile with Zero Two. What is she still doing here? What a strange person. In case you forgot, no person has horns! That's enough. <clears throat> she also literally sits next to you guys. And after some flirting from Zero Two in public, we get to see an underground city which looks exactly like an underground city from Evangelion. They even have the same lighting. Okay, after that we get to see the branch of government that controls this world, apparently. We've received word that Strelitzia has stayed back at Plantation 13. Another one of that girl's whims, no doubt. Our only desire is the true Evangelion. Its awakening will coincide with the resurrection of Lilith. And so that could also be a coincidence. You're a detective. 
and after that we finally get to see the mechas. And yes, that's exactly how pilots sit in a robot. Commence connecting. Do I actually have to explain what's wrong about this? Can't I? If they would just let me ride with Zero Two and Strelitzia. A plastic butt. No, 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 really, a plastic butt. Do I have to explain anything else about the terrible designs in this anime? A mock battle with me and a Franks? That is correct. Please, allow me to be his partner. But Hiro doesn't really want to do it because he only wants to pilot Franks with Zero Two. Anyway, during the training scene, it is also revealed that Trigger also copied synchronization from Evangelion. But if you thought that was the worst part, nope. Then they just copied the scene from the end of Evangelion. Why isn't it working? We have to keep moving, come on! Damn it! Let this happen! <laughs> That wasn't just a coincidence, was it? Anyway, since Hero wants to pilot with Zero Two, his synchronization is terrible, therefore they lose the fight. Yes, and this is the anime everyone was talking about. This is the 10 out of 10 anime, best of the year, and whatever people were saying about it. And I understand that people who were saying it's 10 out of 10 were like 12 at the time. But if you're 19, 25, 30, and you think this anime is 10 out of 10, do you need a Kit Kat? Meanwhile, other characters go to electrical station or whatever where there's a dragon who beats their ass in like 20 seconds. So they decided to ask Zero Two for help, but since she only wants to pilot with Hero, who is still incapable of piloting for some reason, I don't know, he was piloting with her before and it was fine, so I don't know. She's not wrong. They're all gonna die down there if we don't send in Strelitzia right away. Strelitzia is no ordinary Franks Mitsuru. Hira was able to ride in it. And if he could handle it, then there's no way I won't be able to. I'll prove I can pilot Strelitzia better than you did. I think Zero Two was also very annoyed of this guy, like all the viewers, so she almost drives him crazy. He's been like this since we got back. Mitsuru, what happened with Zero Two? That girl. She tried to devour everything I have. No one is safe with that monster! Mitsuru, stop! And in my opinion, this development is really well made, because now we can see Hero's relationship with Zero Two as a very dangerous one. However, they just break it all with one joke. He hasn't touched any of his food. Maybe I should eat it so it doesn't go to waste. HA! That's because he's fat, get it? And then we get some exposition where we can clearly see that Zero Two doesn't care about any of her teammates. Excuse me? As long as I have my darling, I don't care what happens. After all, those other kids will die soon anyway. And that she, for some reason, doesn't like being called not human. I don't know, there was already one scene where she was called not a human, and she was fine. Well, I guess she just didn't hear it. And then this robot attacks. And yes, it looks like a toy from my childhood. Is it dead? No, I doubt it. I don't think anyone got its core. And who cares about that, because we get a scene where Romeo and Juliet are separated by the evil government. I truly wanted to be with you, but now this is goodbye. Please, don't leave me! Zero two! Okay, okay, where is this love came from exactly? It came out of nowhere. You guys had like zero personal conversations. You guys literally know nothing about each other. Hey, keep moving. How can I leave after that? So Zero Two just does that. You gotta do superhero landing. Wait for it. Woo! Superhero landing. Yeah, that's really hard on your knees. Hey, those two got through the gate. I'm doing it. I'm piloting. Cool, but. You know what? Turns out Hero got some kind of disease from Zero Two, and then we get to see another team, who actually look like soldiers. And not like first graders. But anyway, before the next mission, other team refuses to fight side by side Zero Two. We can't do it. We will not fight alongside Strelitzia. That girl doesn't care about her allies in the slightest. We can't trust her to have our backs in the field. What are you saying? 
The joint operation two years ago, when your reckless and utterly selfish fighting style wound up leaving us isolated out there on the battleground, and I lost my partner! Bruh, even side characters have better motivation than those guys. So the next day our heroes and hero are preparing for the mission. And at this point animators have given up because right now they copy entire scenes from Evangelion. Yeah, that's... Coincidence, it's like a. Oh, and by the way, check this out. Oh. Yes, I know, sounds oddly similar to. Yes, even Gillingham was not enough, they also copied Pacific Rim. Oh, and by the way, we finally get to see difference between our main character team and the other team, because the other team is actually useful in the fight and cooperating, and the main character team are just stupid and unnecessary on this battlefield. Oh, by the way, remember fan service? So yeah, we get to have a scene where Hero is barely okay, and Zero Two gone crazy in trying to break out of the Franks. But instead of, like something emotional we get to see butt on half a screen but all of a sudden hero is okay he doesn't have any illness anymore so they get back together on a robot and just destroy a dragon out of which the wings from Evangelion appear by the way if you're wondering there is absolutely no explanation in this anime why this dragon had wings there was literally no purpose for the scene they just copied it because it looked cool uh i have no words I literally have nothing to say. I, I don't understand how that happened. Like, we let that happen. Like, at, like, as a community, as an anime community, we let this anime exist. Like, do you imagine if any other anime did this such amount of copied stuff? It would have been cancelled there and then. <sighs> oh my, I think I need a Kit Kat. Anyway, next episode is beach episode. Well, just a typical beach episode. I don't have anything to say about that. What the heck is a kiss? Huh? Anyway, how is your sex life? Anyway, our characters find an abandoned city where where Kokoro finds a book about pregnancy. But this book will be important. Anyway, next we get to see a fight with a dragon with uh, with rap music. <laughs> Anyway, Dragon spits some kind of acid, and this acid like easily goes inside the robots and just spills on pilots. And this all happened just for the sake of... Uh, of this scene. <laughs> we have a problem, Zero Two! You're being exposed! Don't tell her, dumbass! Literally, this entire fight was just here, so we get to see Butt of Zero Two and the other characters on the full screen. And the rest of the episode is just someone funny sitcom. Listen up. No boys are allowed on this side of the line. Who died and put you in charge? Bro, also some inconsistency with language because some signs are in English, some in Japanese, but who cares about that? Check out the conflicts in the anime. We went and took a dip in the lake and it felt amazing. Okay, would it kill you to get dressed? You might say that I'm nitpicking, but this is a dramatic mecha anime with romance, all right. So why is this unnecessary comedy even here? Okay, okay, not even unnecessary. Why is this dumb comedy here? While arguing, guys accidentally stumble upon a room where there was other team before. But turns out this team has died in battle, but the government was keeping it a secret from them. And I would say this is a pretty good twist because even though those guys are soldiers, the concept of death is still kind of unknown for them because, well, they're still just kids. I apologize, I'm sorry. Also, you have my word. I'll try not to leer at you anymore. I'm way too cute for you not to leer at me. Ah, this bitch! All right, finally a mecha scene. The team goes to fight a dragon that can explode somehow. And as a result, one of them gets stuck inside of a dragon. And yes, it looks very creative, but... It's doing something! It's it go! Go to home! Keep calm, okay? Right now you're in the Klaxosaur. 
<laughs> anyway, I'm wasting power here, so I'm gonna switch to safe mode for a bit. All right. If Shinji doesn't operate the Ava and just focuses on staying alive by switching to life support mode, that will give him 16 hours. No need to worry. After all, the Frank's life support systems run off of backup power. It's been 12 hours since I switched to life support mode. <sighs> Guess that means I have about four hours left. How long ago did Hito radio? 30 minutes? There's only one thing I can do now. But sir, what if we can't eliminate it by then? In that case, the plantation will open fire as well. Only plausible option that's available to us. We drop our entire stock of 992 N2 mines at its center. However, if we launch enough strikes, there's a chance one will eventually finish it. Are you telling us you would leave Goro to die? In the worst case scenario, absolutely. But the Ava's body couldn't withstand it. What would happen to Shinji? What kind of rescue mission is this? Whether or not the pilot survives is immaterial. <laughs> Just a coincidence. Yes, on episode 9, Darling the Franks copies entire episodes from Evangelion. And after all those shenanigans, Glasses Kun confesses his love to Ichigo. I think I love you, Ichigo. <laughs> Meanwhile, the government, who's been watching our team this entire time, has decided that they're so good, so good that they're gonna send them to the most important location in history. To the Dragon Nest, to be specific. That's right. Their number of kills over the past fortnight is 3.7 times greater than in their first. Fortnite Battle Pass. I just shit. In the next episode, we get some important backstory, specifically about Hiro and Mitsuru. So basically, they were close friends in childhood and promised to each other that when they grow up, they will pilot Franks together. But also, it turns out that some kids don't have enough antibodies or whatever, which will not allow them to pilot Franks. Mitsuru was one of them. However, they can make a decision whether to go through a dangerous operation to get more antibodies or whatever, and in that case they will be able to pilot the Franks. So Mitsuru actually agreed to go through this dangerous operation, but after this operation, Hiro doesn't even remember his promise. Our promise? What promise is that? Because of that, as Mitsuru was growing, he was becoming more and more angry at everybody. Okay, now question. Does anybody see the flaw in this plot twist? First of all, since the very beginning of the series, it is explained that Franks can be piloted only by a duo between a boy and a girl, and literally everybody knows that. So how the hell this promise even made sense? And another problem I have with this, if the world is so cruel, if they have a totalitarian government, then why is that a choice for kids to go through this operation or not? Because like I said, their whole purpose is to pilot Franks and defend the rest of humanity. But if they don't have enough antibodies and they decide not to do this operation, then they're useless. And later on, it's even revealed that literally anybody who decided not to do this operation is just frozen. And those kids are like six years old, why even give them a choice? Why? But if you thought that was the only plot twist, nah! So basically this girl whose name I forgot was attracted to this guy, I think. So uh, do you think you could maybe promise to be my partner for the rest of forever? Of course, I promise. But later on when she finds a book about pregnancy, she just suddenly falls in love with Mitsuru. I'd like to try writing with Mitsuru. But... Kokoro. Well, he's prettier, I guess. But during the closest fight, it is revealed that their synchronization is terrible or something because Mitsuro is just unable to trust anybody. And that leads to another scene copied from Evangelion without any actual reason. Probably just a coincidence. Immediately after that, Mitsuru just out of nowhere, like really out of nowhere, within one scene, realizes that he should trust people. And as a result, falls in love with this girl and they live happily ever after. Oh, and can somebody remind me what this love is based on? On a freaking book. 
Just imagine if instead of book about birds and the bees, she found book like about cooking or something. Well, that could have turned out way differently. But I loved Kokoro so much. I loved her so much. Also, what's with the quality in this scene? Did somebody just scale the clip? Later, we also get to meet yet another team who are the biggest jerks I've ever seen in my entire life. Also, in the next episode, Zero Two for some reason becomes really angry at everybody, even at Hero. Zero Two, did something happen recently? Must be these days, I guess. And as a result of Zero Two's personality shift, she becomes completely insane. Don't touch me! <gasps> Get away from me! Also, we're told that because of this disease that Hero got, he will soon become not human. I don't know, their words, not mine. They also copy this scene with Ray from Evangelion, and of course the choking scene. That was very important, apparently. But who cares about that? Because we finally get the biggest twist in the series. Well, we're waiting. So we get to see Zero Two's childhood, where she's basically imprisoned in her room. The only one who visits her is apparently the anti-spiral from Gurren Lagann. We also get to see a backstory between Hiro and Ichigo, and it basically all comes down to the fact that he gave her a name. Then your name will be... Ichigo! Why Ichigo? Well... Why? My name is... Why? My name is... My name is... Ichigo! And I was wondering how those characters are gonna meet, since Hero is always under surveillance and Zero Two is usually either in the lab or trapped in her room. So Hero just goes the other way in the corridor, sees how they're torturing Zero Two, and breaks the window. That's it? Just like that? And after that, they're running away in the forest while it's snowing. Well, they're like six years old. Uh, alright. Uh, okay, first of all, why is there such a huge window in the lab where you test one of the most important clones you've ever made? Also, why this lab has such a small security that even a child can just break a window there? And okay, if you just turn off your brain, this is actually a pretty good backstory. That explains the entire relationship between the characters and why their relationship is came out of nowhere. Uh, except, uh, no it's not, apparently, because one soldier caught them, their memories get erased. You were the girl, the one with the picture book back then. But how? It's you. You are my darling from back then. All this time. Bruh, do you realize? That's not me who's crazy. That That's the plot. That's the story I'm watching right now. The story is dry. But anyway, when they remember this, Hero just for some reason tapped out, and Zero Two started hating her teammates even more. You shut your mouth. What I do to my darling is none of your damn business, you understand? Then you admit it, if it makes you happy. Oh my, the dialogues. The dialogues are so great. As a result, Zero Two is kicked out of the team because she cannot pilot Franks with anybody but Hero, and Hero is sick. I guess. Before the mission gets underway, please remove code 002 from squad 13. Yes. If this request isn't granted, we'll have no choice. Squad 13 will not participate in the operation. Uh, Ichigo, let me remind you that you guys are soldiers. Who, who cares about what you actually want? You guys have an order. This is your only purpose to exist, is to defend humanity and pilot Franks. Pfft, what the hell are you talking about? We literally have scenes where we're told that everyone is supposed to follow the government's order. Everyone. Or there will be consequences. But right now, it turns out that the team can just say, nah, we're not gonna fight. Because we just don't feel like it. Oh yeah, I remember how I mentioned that Zero Two is right now insane. <laughs> Goto, are you okay? And once again, no consequences. Anyway, Zero Two is finally allowed to go and visit Hero, but while they were waiting, he just, uh, escaped. Is there any security cameras in this building? So when Hero finally figures everything out and comes back to the room, Zero Two literally beat everyone up. And because of this, he decides to say that. Right now, you truly are a monster. What an idiot. Of course, Zero Two doesn't get any punishment whatsoever after almost killing her entire team. Instead, she gets transferred into a different one. Which, of course, is very sad. No way. How awful. 
compared to our prior battles, this one's on a completely different scale. But Hero is not allowed to go on this final battle because he doesn't have a partner. Huh. Well, lucky you. Anyway, during the final battle, actually pretty terrible final battle, a dragon that looks like a Titanic appears out of the ground. And I shit you not, right before the final battle, they literally lined up like three plantations right in front of the dragon nest. And because of that, Dragon Titanic literally smashes them. Dragons ran around the city and Zero Two tries to stop him. And of course, Hero on the training robot tries to reach her to tell her that he loves her but ultimately fails. But anyway, Glasses Kuhn says that he can replace him as a pilot, so they can just walk in Franks to Zero Two. But also, it is revealed that during synchronizations, pilots can read each other's minds. Hero's mind is entering mine. Where's he? Hero's memories? And okay, I'm glad that they didn't copy that from Evangelion, because they copied it from Pacific Rim. The drift, Jaeger tech, two pilots mind melding through memories with the body of a giant machine. The deeper the bond, the better you fight. Bruh, okay, you copied the music, but copying scenes from a Hollywood blockbuster, really? Shame on you! Shame! So Ichigo finally realizes that she will never be with Hiro because he's in love with Zero Two so much! So she delivers Hiro to Zero Two and... Why does Robot have hair? I finally got to see you! No! Don't look! I called you fodder! How can you ever forget me for saying and that?! And I called you a monster, remember? So now we're even. Okay, this is a really emotional scene, but okay, your teammates are fighting a dangerous battle. Come on, maybe we'll do this later. <laughs> Zero Two! Charlie! Charlie! And of course they destroy a dragon, Zero Two is crying, Hero is crying, everyone's crying! I'm crying too because this anime isn't over yet! But then Giant Hand appears out of the ground and just takes the majority of the plantations with it. Uh, what? What the fuck is happening here? Anyway, the next morning, Tim is trying to live with the consequences of this fight. Because of the damage done to a plantation, it is slowly dying, while government is building a very powerful weapon for the last fight with dragons. Uh, I won't. Thanks, Zero Two. Carrying no rations is taken care of. Right now, we've got 30 minutes for breakfast. You're awfully meticulous. Uh, ah? Uh? No, I didn't skip any episodes. Zero Two just became friendly, and everybody just forgot that she was acting insane just a scene ago. Bruh, Zero Two's character development is so weird. At first, she's kinda egotistical and manipulative, then she becomes kinda crazy because of her origin, and then she just becomes normal because Hero was that kid who saved her in childhood. Bruh, do you understand that character development is supposed to go through emotional scenes, or at least some sort of consistency? But Zero Two gets personality shifted without any actual reasons. Anyway, our team gets visited by the jerk team, who just randomly find the book about pregnancy. Anyway, as a result, those two five graders decided to get married. Because love. Why'd you do that? It's so out of nowhere. So you remember this old meme where like FBI open up? Uh, so yeah, that's exactly what government does to their wedding. Everybody freeze. You move, you die. Do the hell are you? They even brought the tanks and everything. But then you're never gonna guess what happened. So basically government erases their memories, but then just casually returns them to the same team? What? <laughs> yes, literally, they just easily get returned to the same team with the same teammates who know exactly what happened and they restore their memories within the same day. <sighs> All right, and then, then the episode 19 happened. And I'll save your time just by saying that that was one of the main reasons why I decided to make this review. Because this entire episode, yes, and I'm saying entire episode, the entire episode is just a copy of Evangelion prequel. The scene of first pilot is exactly the same, the backstory of the world is exactly the same, even the storyline of the government that is controlling the world right now is exactly the same as in Evangelion. They even copied the Red Sea without any reason. I have no words for an honorless thief. By the way, it is also mentioned that all dragons are controlled by the... by their queen who is a... I don't know, Queen Loli? I don't know. 
Uh, but little question, if you guys know where that Quinn lives, and you guys have rockets, if she's literally the one controlling dragons, have you thought of just nuking the place and that's it? No, I guess not. Well, that's normal, you know. Also, right now, characters realize that government was restricting them this entire time, and which means government bad. But anyway, this is the finale, they're gonna be the final battle, and hopefully, hopefully this all gonna make sense at the end. Or maybe not, I don't know, but I... Anyway, during the final battle, Lolly Queen appears, literally one-shots everybody. Ah, but this all doesn't matter. This all doesn't matter, because right now it's time for finale. An earthquake? What the hell is this? Programmed it to explode. The die has been cast. This planet will explode, leaving nothing behind. <laughs> what? Uh, yes, now there is not only humans versus dragons, now humans versus dragons versus aliens. And that twist, as you'd expect, comes out of freaking nowhere. Okay, so, let's see if I got all those shenanigans right. So basically, those aliens are pretty much complementation of humanity from Evangelion. And also, if I'm not mistaken, this government is also, like, part of those aliens. And their plan was to, like, reunite the entire humanity with those aliens. Well, that's just lazy writing. Delta to your left! You... What? <laughs> Bro, I'm so tired of this already. Okay, so... Why? Why do you still struggle? This battle was never yours to fight. Please wait for me, Harley. Is this what living is for you? I'm beginning to understand. I shall give you every ounce of strength that remains within me. Queen, who literally was fighting aliens the first time, then fighting humans for I don't know how many years, and then right now when she just sees those two kiss, she just, like, she, she just gives up. Yes, literally, all those thousands of years of fighting, pff, I don't care about that, it, it's on you guys. Can I get a Kit Kat now? <laughs> okay, I don't even know what to say at the end. Like, you know this anime exists, right? Like, it has ratings, it has pretty good ratings even, but this whole series is basically a huge control C, control V. The amount of plagiarized content from Evangelion, Pacific Rim, and actually other animes that I have not mentioned is just insane. I can go on for hours about every detail where this anime stole from someone else, but unlike this anime, I actually respect your time. In addition, there's not only zero creativity in the world building, we also get dumb characters whose plot lines are so undeveloped. Because even after watching this entire anime, I have absolutely no idea why those characters feel the way they feel. Well, I guess that was my review. If you're interested in my YouTube channel, please follow, write a comment, I'll go get a Kit Kat.